teachers have an incredible sense of where their students are and what they need. Yes, they do. Now, if you're in a four-day lesson plan, at the end of day one, we can ask you a couple of questions. How are your students doing on these, this, and this? They need to know it for the next day. And the teacher just flicks off. They're all ready. Some are ready. None are ready. And it will go through and modify the lesson plan for the, you know, the, the days that are ahead of us. We're looking at every classroom, every community mm -hmm. has its own profile oh, and its own needs. Good. And uh, what we want the AI to be able to do is start from a base that is high quality materials. And in those high quality materials, we are addressing, we have the pieces that address uh, all of those needs, but sequencing them together and getting them right for that classroom uh, in that community is incredibly challenging yeah. for a teacher. Yeah. And it's a job that is built for AI. And what gets me so excited is that it gives us the opportunity to give the teacher the empowerment that they need and want in the classroom while also meeting the needs of their administrators yeah. to make sure that all of their students in all of their classrooms are starting from a high quality instruction mm -hmm. base. Yeah. And bake in the assessments on top of that. Yes. Then you've got really the coup de grace. You've got the whole package of what a teacher needs to individualize instruction yep. for their classroom. This is what got us so excited about uh, going from being writable, the independent company, to being part of yeah. made is that uh, just this week, we're releasing what we had always dreamed of, which was bringing the full AI, uh, of the full curriculum into the AI context so that the AI can operate on top of it and use the assessment data that we've got and modify it to meet the specific needs of that oh, classroom. My goodness. And it, Teacher. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> one of the things that's even uh, got me more excited about this, which was a, a, you get these weird discoveries along the way, which is, uh, you know, people are tired, tired of assessment, assessment, assessment. Yeah. Okay. And sitting there, it's down. Well, teachers have an incredible sense of where their students are and what they need. That's the right? items. Now, if you're in a four-day lesson plan, at the end of day one, we can ask you a couple of questions. How are your students doing on these, this, and this? They need to know it for the next day. And the teacher just flicks off. They're all ready. Some are ready. None are ready. And it will go through and modify the lesson plan for the, you know, the, the days that are ahead of us. It's just, it's so exciting to see this yeah. coming together. And to think of how much more responsive we can allow teachers to. Yeah. That it's so time consuming as a teacher yes. to um, have the assessment, grade it if you're not using a grader, to grade it, to think about that feedback, to modify your lessons, and then individualize them for certain students that might need yes. a little bit more touch. I mean, it's, it is so time consuming and it yes. is exhausting. And then for teachers. Get out through the whole calendar. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine if your calendar could just automatically flow forward. It's a modifying your high quality curriculum that you're using as your basis. Yeah. And it's just making the subtle tweaks that before you had to make. You know what else I think this will do is. So many times as a teacher, you may go to supplemental. I, I, as, a, as an administrator, I used to tell my teacher, like, don't jump to supplemental like that. Like, let's stay in the core yes. until we're positive. We need the supplemental materials. But sometimes they either don't have time to go through all the materials yes. that come with four, because there's a lot of materials that come with four, and they don't have time to yes. zip through that and figure that out. To me, this is going to be a tool they can use to make sure they've maximized the Absolutely. core yeah. before jumping to a supplemental kinks, which is better for everybody. There are tens of 
maybe 100,000 resources in the court curriculum. Everything yeah. is in there, but it, it just can be a little bit overwhelming yeah. to try and pull it all together, yeah. especially in the dynamic classroom where you have to do it really in moment by moment yeah, yeah. and that i is really yeah, it'll be. what gets me up at night keeps me working through the weekends is that there is this moment here yeah where we can use technology to really make instruction better and support teachers in realizing the the yeah. reason why they became teachers yeah and a lot of us have left the classroom so the teachers that are coming in to classroom positions may not have, you know, COVID, you know, even though it was a hot minute ago, it still took out a lot of teachers from the profession and it's taken time to bring them back in. In fact, Texas is one of the states that has phenomenal teacher ed programs and has the you know, I think out of all the states has the least problem, although they still have a problem yeah. with uh, attracting teachers. So when you think about the complementary um, tool that this can be for a teacher that may be like a second career teacher or could be a, like fresh out of the classroom yes. teacher, this seems like something that can really accelerate my ability to meet the needs of learners without feeling overwhelmed and walking out the next day. Yeah. Because there's a lot of that going on too. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that this can meet the, the wide range of, of teacher needs from the new teacher mm -hmm. just out of school that's coming into the classroom to the experienced uh, teacher that's just, you know, got all of passion in, in it yeah. to be that teacher. Well, and I think every teacher's in it to be that teacher that changes a student's life. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, I I think we can help all of them. I mean, imagine yeah. if you could actually have a conversation with your curriculum and materials. Hey, I've got a student that's struggling with this. What can I do? Yeah. Like, hey, hey Siri or hey Google, our little, sure. hey, whatever. Well, let's be smarter hey. than Siri, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, it's like chat GPT, hey, Subby. but you're really, uh, you're really able to talk to the curriculum, yeah. ask it a question and it will refer you back to the materials and the ideas that, uh, will help that student. That would be incredible. Almost. I think, um, when I listen to teachers, one of the things that I hear them say is. They two things. They say, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. I've got so much that I'm responsible for. Things are being added to my plate every day. They're not being taken off. I I agree with that, teachers. I know yeah. for a fact, even as an administrator, former uh superintendent, I would roll stuff out and I wouldn't think about what needed to yes. be taken off. I would just think they would do it, but they're so amazing that they're not gonna take anything off their plates and thus they're told to take it off their plate. So you literally have to have a list. So that's another place AI could help is to roll out. These are the things that we don't need to do anymore. Yes. Here's your list. Yes. And here are the things that we want you to pay attention to that we do need you to do. Here's that, here's that kind of list, so to speak. And then helping a teacher understand uh, the role of superintendent and the principal and just kind of navigating the space. There's so much noise around AI right now. And it's holistic, you know, it's not just education, but we're getting caught up in it. And so I think sometimes in some parts of the country in particular, it's a little harder than others because the narrative in general around AI is just not what we need it to be. We're Tell me when education. Think about this. This is something that gets me kind of excited is that there's an opportunity here to meet teachers where they are mm -hmm. and not say you have to change everything. Yeah. Okay. So a teacher that's an HMH teacher that's working with a textbook, mm -hmm. they can actually have their teacher's edition that is powered by AI. Mm -hmm. So does that actually, they don't have to change the way they're standing up in front of the yeah. class. They don't have to 
do everything digitally. They can progress to that. We'd love to see right. uh, teachers move along that curve. But there's the opportunity right now in my planning to just make that take that one step and go in and use the digital teacher's edition that has the AI built into it. And and will it make your planning life easier? Can we take stuff? Yeah, oh. I think, yes. I'm old fashioned. I know that shocks everybody because I'm like such a digital whatever. I'm a digital advocate, but I do like to keep balance. So my teacher's edition, I do like to look through the paper version. Yes. But what I would do with the digital version is I would go through my paper version. I would mark things that I want to look at the digital version to see what it could do. Yeah. And then I would utilize AI to do that. And I would do that in the context of my individual learners, yeah. data that I've gotten back. Yes. You know, we assessment has its assessment is not an event assessment is a component of good instruction yeah. and so to look at my assessments to see where my kids are performing and then to use that teacher's edition to find the right resources to either accelerate some of my kids or bring some of my kids up yes if i could just plug that in yeah, so to ai and it would say you're... jimmy does this johnny does this libby does that i would be like well, and look at page 47. <laughs> yeah. Or TE. Yeah. This is something that you may want you to focus on uh, in your next yeah. lesson. So this is, And direct me to digital. Does it do that? Because Yes. Uh, and, but yeah. the, if we really want to start from the basis. Yeah. yeah. Both of the teachers there out there, I think, are still, there's something great about the textbook. We're, we're 30, well, 20 something years into ebooks. And 80% yeah. of books are still paper, okay? So you get a sense for the whole. You know where you are. You're pushing your way through it all. So, if yeah. that's where you are as a teacher, I still think that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity yeah. to leverage this technology to make your planning life easier so you can go and use your textbook more efficient. And help the student, too, because the student, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that we do in teaching that we do at the convenience of the adult. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily help the learner. And so if this could even push a little of it, uh, you know, yes. some of us to utilize more technology in a more meaningful yes. way, like the ebooks, I think I might want my students to read a passage, but then I would like for them to go into the ebook and watch a video or something that's related to the passage that brings it more to life for my learner. And, yes. But it may be too time intensive for me to do it. I got a kid to pick up and yeah. food to make. But if I had a tool that could direct me to it, like this new tool, yeah. Yeah. that would be that's what power. We're, that's what we're trying to get to. Yeah. And actually, this you're touching in an area where professional development oh, yeah. is so yeah. important. And Again, being in, in coming from really focusing on developing students as writers and thinkers, the, yeah, that is one of the most challenging, time-consuming uh, endeavors for a teacher. And every you probably have one teacher that you point to, yeah, as that's the one teacher that taught me how to to write. But and we built so many processes around this challenge that it's just it was not conceivable that a teacher could provide feedback on every student right. of writing but you know what now we can now it is now we can okay? so we have this so proven simple uh instructional technique of getting students to revise their writing that before this you could never give them the feedback to make re revision yeah uh meaningful now now we can and so, uh -uh. so we have to take a step back mm -hmm. as professionals and say, okay, what are the opportunities that this gives us? Yeah. And rethink what we do in the classroom. And that gets complicated. Something yeah. just as soon, as simple as doing a revision, it, uh, you know, it's changing your calendar. Yeah. Yeah. It's eating into your, your schedule to your yeah. pace. Yeah. It's eating to your pace. You know, we see fourth grade students write in at, uh, at high school levels in classrooms where there's a lot of revision going on. Really? It is astonishing. 
the 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 different practices that we see and the results that come out of it are remarkable. Hey, you know, a lot of education is very complicated. Yeah. Writing yeah. and getting and revision yeah. is a pretty simp- a simple, well understood, well researched. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you can introduce feedback. Yeah. And feedback in every subject area is beneficial. 